Hey girls, Tiffany Dawn here, and I'm so excited you're joining me for another week of Girl Talk, my favorite time of every week. Tuesdays with you, or Tuesdays with Tiffany. And if you're eating breakfast right now, then we are having breakfast at Tiffany's on Tuesday, which is kind of fun. And today is day one of our two-part Thanksgiving series all about food. So if you're wondering how do I handle food during the holiday because I tend to overeat or I have an eating disorder, I'm hoping that these two weeks can be awesome and helpful for you. So today I'm going to talk about overeating, which was one of the hardest battles I have ever had to fight. And for years it was like if I saw a bag of pretzels, like I couldn't stop eating it. Ten years ago, I would be stuffing my face with this. It would be gone in ten minutes. I would not have tasted one bite that I took. And I would never feel satisfied. So then I'd want another bag or popcorn, because usually I went to popcorn next. And sometimes I'd try to wait and be like, I'm not going to eat these right now. And I would think about it all day long. When can I eat my pretzels? When can I eat my pretzels? And it was an obsession and an addiction and I hated it. And I couldn't stop it. And in case you've ever felt that way, that powerlessness, that guilt and shame that you can't stop eating, I've been there. And that's why I want to share with you seven things that have helped me find freedom for my addiction to food. One of the first things that I had to do was learn how to enjoy my food. It seems so counterintuitive, like wouldn't you want to not enjoy food so you wouldn't eat as much? But I found that part of the reason I ate so much was because I didn't even taste the food. So I kept wanting more because I wanted to actually like taste it and enjoy it. So instead of rushing through a bag of pretzels, I would make myself savor the taste of every single pretzel. What is the texture right now? What am I smelling? Just like slowing my world way down. I had this certain food that I'd make for myself in order to slow down my day and enjoy my food. It was tomato soup with pasta and cheese in it and it was amazing. I would just eat a bite and just taste and savor every flavor and every texture and think what's happening around me? What am I hearing? What am I smelling? What am I seeing and feeling? And that was my mindful soup. So find food for you that can be your mindful food as you learn how to practice mindfulness before a meal, during it, and after it. So that was the first step was just simply actually tasting my food and enjoying it. The next thing that I had to do was be grateful for my food. Overeating is a vicious cycle. It's like you overeat and then you feel so guilty that you overeat again to make yourself feel better. So a big part of breaking the cycle is breaking the guilt by changing our mindset toward food. And instead of seeing it as something to feel guilty for, instead seeing it as a gift. In our culture, we hear a lot like, oh, that food's good and that food's bad. But we gotta get this out of our head like that I'm bad because I'm eating this food. And instead of focusing on my food as good or evil, I just started trying trying to thank God for it and just be like, thank you for this food. Thank you that this ice cream tastes really good right now. Like this hits the spot tonight, God. Like that is so cool. Like this is a gift. It energizes my body. Maybe ice cream doesn't energize my body, but a lot of foods, they enable me to do what you've called me to do. They give me energy. Sometimes we just get so focused on health that we forget about the enjoyment part. Like God made food enjoyable. And anytime I was tempted to start thinking guilty thoughts about food, I just had to switch it around and say, thank you God for this food. Thank you that right now, in this moment, after this breakup, this box of ice cream really helps. I appreciate that. The third thing was to start realizing when I was actually hungry. This was one of the hardest parts for me, partly because I've been starving myself for so long, I didn't feel the regular stomach hunger pains. Instead, I would get a headache or I'd get dizzy or really tired or cold. And that was a cue that, oh, I need food. But then also recognize like emotional hunger. So when I started overeating and binge eating, a lot of the time I was trying to eat my feelings. So instead of being physically hungry for food, I was feeling lonely or I was bored or I was depressed. And those are signs that maybe it's not so much a physical hunger, maybe it's more emotional or spiritual. So we have to go to the root of it. So, okay, if I'm feeling really lonely right now, then I need to get some friends around me. I need to spend some time with God. If I'm bored, then I'm gonna find something that I can do. I'll serve other people. And one of the biggest things for me was just getting to know the Lord more, like really developing and diving into my relationship with Him and letting His love fill pieces of my heart that food could never fill. Number four, I had to start eating more frequent meals, 
which also seems counterintuitive. But part of the reason I was overeating was because I waited until I was starving. Have you ever gone grocery shopping when you're starving and you buy like everything in the store? That's kind of how it is with eating too. So when I started eating smaller amounts but more frequently, then I was able to kind of manage my eating a little more because I wasn't waiting till I was so hungry. I just was like, give me anything and everything. And number five, I started trying to just leave a tiny bit on my plate at the end of each meal. Now this was something I had to be careful about because I didn't want to go into any sort of disordered eating behavior. But instead of letting food control my life where if it was there, I had to eat all of it, instead I had to be like, you know what? I can leave a bite. It was just a practical thing I could do to kind of take control. So even if I had seconds, however many servings I had, I would just leave a bite or two on my plate just to be like, I don't have to eat every last bite. Number six, I had to give myself permission. Like you can have that, but you don't have to. It'll still be there tomorrow. And so this means that some nights I'm like, I really want ice cream tonight, but you know what? I could have ice cream tonight or I could have ice cream tomorrow night. I'm not saying you cannot have ice cream ever again. It reminds me of 1 Corinthians 6 verse 12 that says, everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. It's kind of this idea that I could eat whatever I want, but I'm not gonna let food control my life. This is my choice and I can eat it or I cannot eat it and that's up to me. And lastly, I had to learn how to listen to my body for what I was hungry for. What does my body need right now? So, okay, I'm feeling hungry, but do I need some like energy from carbs? If so, can I get some healthier carbs? Do I need certain vitamins? Maybe I need to have some orange juice or I'm feeling really tired. I feel like I need some protein right now. I'm gonna get some yogurt and it just takes a lot of practice and there's some websites you can look at for mindful eating. Just kind of starting to listen to what your body needs. So let me kind of describe what my life looks like now. I can actually like hold a bag of pretzels. Zero temptation to eat this right now. For me, that's a miracle. I don't feel guilty for what I eat, almost ever. I feel like I eat when I'm hungry and I stop when I'm not hungry anymore. And food doesn't control my thoughts anymore. I'm not thinking about it all day long, every day. I enjoy the food that I'm eating and if I don't like it, I don't really eat it. Unless if it's something that's really good for me and then I make myself eat it anyway, usually. I enjoy my ice cream, but I don't have to have it every single night because I know it will still be there tomorrow and I can have it then if I want to. But please comment below, what's one thing that helps you to eat in a healthy way and to enjoy your food? And as always, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the subscribe button, the like button, or comment. And next week, we're going to talk more about how to face food at the holidays when you've struggled with an eating disorder. So I hope that this can be really helpful for some of you as well. Thanks, girls. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you next week.